and had to take the 815 ferry. But that day I remembered I had done some work the day before, so why rush to get to work? Don't take the 815, take the 830, which is a very, very good thing because if I had taken the 815 ferry, I would have been at the bottom of the World Trade Center when the first plane hit. Carmen Maria Rodriguez remembers it as a brilliantly bright September morning as she took the ferry from Staten Island into the city where she worked as a radio journalist for Radio Marti. We leave the ferry, we look up, and there is a plane on a very clear day, very quickly, and that's the moment that the plane went on an angle to further access more floors, and I got to see the silhouette of people looking down. I have to live with the image of people looking down as they were being flown into the slaughterhouse. There were four coordinated attacks on that day, on the Pentagon in Virginia, a plane brought down in Shanksville, Pennsylvania, and the two at Ground Zero in New York. The towers collapsing on top of each other, that was a jolt like an earthquake. Mm. We had tremors in southern Manhattan, the southern tip of Manhattan. Not only did we have the sound, but we had the tremors. And we had earthquakes, and I was, I was absolutely terrified now. I'm still reporting, but I am terrified. Amid the chaos, Rodriguez worked, getting eyewitness accounts on the phone, doing live radio crossings. I called immediately. Immediately I called. That's the whole reason why I stayed. I don't want to do the type of journalism that you look at the camera and you look at the TV and somebody else is writing your story. This was my story. Remember, I yelled, get back on the boat. I never went back on the boat. It was my decision to start reporting. Fifteen years on and the area has once again become a booming business district. The Memorial Plaza opened in 2011, followed by the museum in 2014 that documents and explores the implications of the attacks. The transformation of the downtown area and the World Trade Center precinct behind me in particular has been nothing short of remarkable. A cleanup operation for many years that would transform itself into a construction site that is slowly edging its way towards completion. And as you can see behind me, a hub of activity, attracting millions of tourists here annually who come to pay their respects to the fallen and to appreciate the resolve of a city and a country in the face of unspeakable tragedy. It's beautiful, you know. Um, I'm glad that the transformation has finally arrived because it was a sad day. I think they have uh, to, to make a good work to uh, show the story, the story about the lives that uh, was sacrificed and uh, put, uh, did something positive about it. I think it's uh, I think it's great for the most part. Not a big fan of the Oculus, but uh, you know what they've done with the plaza and the. Um, uh, you know, the memorial fountains are, are really moving. Rodriguez says she was only able to return to the area two months ago for the first time since 2001. I have episodes where I can smell burnt flesh, burnt flesh, and more burnt flesh. And it happens in the weirdest of places. I may be buying a soda and boom. And the other day I got on the ferry and there were planes flying, these fast planes, um, Air Force. And when I heard the planes, I had another flashback because I remember 9-11 when we were covered in dust that the Air Force was coming and I said we're gonna get hit again on 9-11. So that triggered a smelling episode and there's nothing I can do about it. And while the memories are painful to recount, this survivor is making new ones by getting married this very Sunday. Let's transform it into a day of love mm -hmm. and of joy mm -hmm. and of future and of sharing and of warmth. Let's do something totally different. The old recipe, 
didn't work, the new one will. Sherman Bryceby's SABC News, New York.